Hey there everybody, Xeon here from Nintendo Life, and today we're excited to share with you our review of Yoshi's Crafted World on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by our very own Gavin Lane, and has been reconstructed into this fancy little video by me. The Yoshi games have carved a niche for themselves as colorful, simplistic experiences well suited to younger gamers or anybody after some cute, low pressure platforming. Completionists may find challenge in hunting down every last collectible, but these games are built to be approachable and Yoshi's Crafted World walks the same path that made the dinosaur's last home console adventure, Yoshi's Woolly World, such a joy. However, it does feel that the rich vein of charm found in these material worlds might be fully tapped out by now. Crafted World has been delivered to us once again courtesy of Goodfeel, the developer behind Woolly World and the wonderful Wii original Kirby's Epic Yarn, which was actually just re-released on 3DS with some new content. For this particular low-stakes, high-color adventure, the craft box has been rated for inspiration, and as you can see for yourself, the team has nailed that junk modeling aesthetic just as it did the yarn and wool look in its previous games. As you can expect, Baby Bowser and Kamek are up to no good, trying, however quite poorly, to rob the Yoshis of their dream gems, shaken from a ceramic base called the Sun Dream Stone. With the gems scattered across the world map, it's up to you to retrieve them all and get the Yoshi clan back to doing what they love, which is basically just loitering around a big stone on a small island. If you've ever played a game in the series, you'll know more or less what to expect. Each level contains three primary objectives, collect 100 coins, finish the level with full health, and find all 20 hidden red coins. Completing each of them rewards you with smiley flowers, the currency that unlocks new worlds. And there's also a whole bunch more scattered throughout the levels, and you want to make sure you nab as many as you can. Now the overworld map may seem small to begin with, but it opens up with over 20 areas to unlock, each with 2-3 to three levels, plus a boss battle, which I guess you could say is pretty entertaining if you're the type that fancies predictable 3 hit affairs. But for each boss you do defeat, you'll be granted one of the 6 missing gems. Within each zone you'll also find a gumball machine that spits out a total of 10 costumes in exchange for coins. These costumes are constructions that Yoshi carries around himself, and while most are made up of things you'd find in your recycling bin, they do provide extra protection for your Yoshi according to their rarity. Now beyond looking super cute, protection is their only function. The Super Mario and Woolly World amiibo offer custom made outfits related to Mario and the gang, while any other figure will nab you a generic amiibo box that Yoshi hauls around him in a typical adorable fashion. Half of the game's magic comes from spotting the various household objects recycled and repurposed throughout the environment. It's a joy to see plastic bottle rockets, bamboo made of straws, and cardboard rhinos popping balloons. You'll even find a few nods to Yoshi's past titles sprinkled throughout the world. It channels a similar sense of scale to Pikmin, with each building, animal, and contraption you encounter feeling like something that was physically created in Goodfeel's offices and now occupies some vast display case. Now good feel, if that display case does exist, can you shoot us a DM over on Twitter? The glorious physicality of all these crafty objects goes a long way to obscuring the fact that, gameplay wise, there's not much you haven't seen before. Some novel additions stand out, from gobbling up horseshoe magnets for help with climbing metallic surfaces, to donning a giant triceratops skull to barge your way through obstacles and enemies, but the aesthetic is what really does the heavy lifting in terms of the inventiveness of the series. Most levels feature multiple planes at certain points, and some neat depth of field effects are employed, but again, it doesn't really alter much from a gameplay perspective. The paths to move between the foreground and background are set, and only elementary puzzles are built around them. The game remains very much on the rails. Everything about the world and gameplay is as reassuringly solid as you'd expect. All the stages are modeled beautifully in three dimensions, and can be temporarily flipped by firing an egg at special clock clouds when you find them although they're almost exclusively used for timed egg firing challenges. You'll have 10 to 15 seconds to shoot some coin carrying shy guys or spot the real smiley flower in a crowd of doppelgangers, but that's kind of about it. After completing a level, a second mode opens enabling you to revisit the diorama levels on the flip side, journeying from the end of the start in search of poochie pups. This lets you appreciate the 360 design for longer, but while Shy Guy's sleeping behind scenery looks cute, it doesn't really change the level in any fundamental way. You're just running the other way now. The ability to flip the stage could have been a special game-defining mechanic, but feels like a slightly missed opportunity that could have given the game a strong identity beyond its art style. 
Some of the beautifully rendered scenery you'll find in the foreground and background can be targeted, with the eggable objects outlined in yellow when the crosshair touches them. Bushes or dangling cutouts may be hiding red coins or other goodies, and the egg shooting is the same as previous games, available on the face or right shoulder buttons with one press activating the cursor and the second launching an egg. It's possible to switch the configuration of the face buttons between three presets, and egg throwing can be sped up to a simple press and hold release. You can also activate Mellow Mode, giving Yoshi a set of wings for unlimited flutter and reducing damage taken, so if you have a level that's giving you too much trouble, don't be afraid to give that a shot. A breezy drop-in drop-out two-player co-op mode also can make things a little easier. One player can literally carry the other, making the combined pair more powerful. The ground pound creates a visible shockwave which will destroy piranha plants that would otherwise require a toss of an egg. It's a fun way to pass the time, especially with kids or inexperienced gamers. While the art direction is undeniably top-notch, the actual picture on the TV is a tad softer than we remember with Woolly World. Menus are immaculate, but everywhere else there's some noticeable dithering in shadows and a fuzziness to the visuals that appear to come from scaling. Everything looks much better when the camera occasionally zooms in. Now we know we're being extremely picky here. It's a lovely looking game, but interestingly for a Nintendo IP, this is an Unreal Engine 4 title, and we get the impression that the team has struggled to get it running as smoothly as it would like. Crafted World certainly gets the console's fans spinning, and the frame rate can dip a touch if you run flat out through some of the more complex levels. The world map also cuts the frame rate in half, in the same way Splatoon 2 does in its hub world. Boss challenges and other tough tests await once you've beaten the final boss. Plus, there's plenty of things to go back and find. The cardboard villagers of the world map require you find them specific souvenirs, and there's even a bit of hide and seek to do. All for extra smileys, of course. The music is the icing on this particularly colorful cake, with an endearingly puffy and slightly out of tune pipe accompanying many of the earwormy tunes. It's very pleasant, although perhaps a tad more repetitive than Woolly World's soundtrack. Over the 8-9 to nine hours we spent reaching the final boss, we started to crave a little more variety. And that sentiment right there sums up the whole game rather well. Lovely, but not quite as good as its predecessors. Don't get us wrong, we went through the entire game wearing a big smile, but Crafted World doesn't offer quite enough variety to make us really grin like Woolly World or the unimpeachable epic Yarn did. Kirby's first venture into these material worlds remains the benchmark, the most coherent, satisfying game in the series. And while this is still a fine platformer, we can't help thinking that another game in the same vein, Yoshi's Beadwork Bonanza, Floral Fantasy, or Cartoon Caper, would need some significant mechanical innovation to avoid feeling like another retread. If you're new to the series, Yoshi's Crafted World has color and charm to spare, even if its inventiveness is largely limited to its looks. For Yoshi fans, it does exactly what you expect it to, which is perhaps the worst thing we can say about it. It's delightfully presented though, and makes for another very solid entry in Nintendo's ever-growing pantheon of material-based platformers. It takes extreme discipline to not overuse the word charm when discussing it. So if you're looking to share a lighthearted platformer with the family, or simply relax in a big chair with a cup of something warm and a comfy pair of socks, be sure to have a spare pair ready. Yoshi's Crafted World will charm the ones you're wearing right off.